Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. There are different stories breaking throughout the world here. I wanted to share with you uh, here on Russia's Linta.ru, uh, translated over into English uh, through Google. It says here, Empire Under Attack. And what the article goes into, I find very interesting, is that the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic, as they are self-proclaimed to be in, uh, independent from the Ukrainian government uh, of Kiev, have more and more officially moved away and are separating uh, from the countries. First time we've really seen a major move like this. It says, what to lose in Ukraine? Renat Akhmetov uh, 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 of nationali nationalization in the republics of Donbass. Uh, according to the article here, and I find it very interesting, it says dozens of enterprises, Ukrainian jurisdictions on the March 1st went into administration of the republics of Donbass. This decision was taken after the Ukrainian side has not fulfilled the requirements of manual DNR and LNR uh, to lift the blockade of uncontrolled territories. Uh, as long as the self-proclaimed Donetsk Luhansk People's Republic is ready to restart business in the new circumstances. Engaged in Kiev, traditional political squabbles, what effect will this turn of events and those most affected by the nationalization analyzed to Letnar? Anyway, the, make it simple because the, the translation does not always come out as clear as we would like it to see. The Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic is officially now pulled away from Ukraine. Uh, they say that Ukraine has done a blockade against the coals that they were the coal that they were mining and sending into the country for its own uh, needs for electricity. And because of their blockade and refusing to work with the people of the East there, they have now officially separated from the country itself. And they have now vowed to sell the coal to other uh, buyers inside of Russia and other parts of the world. And even Russia, as we know recently, has accepted, President, uh, President uh, Vladimir Putin has accepted the documentation from Eastern Ukraine, from the Donetsk region there, the Donbas region, uh, has accepted their documents, all their documents, their passports, etc., as legal documents. So therefore, Russia taking the first, step, first step in accepting the autonomy of this region there uh, and working with them. We know that Russia has continued to supply weapons to the, uh, this region to begin with and fighting for their independence, mainly because otherwise the Kiev government, which is very much a fascist government, would end up trying to annihilate the Russian-speaking people in that part of the world. Uh, so it is a major step, and it'll be very interesting to see how that is received by uh, the rest of the world community. No doubt uh, those that are friends with Russia will end up being uh, probably more loyal on this re regards, but NATO itself will probably want to add more sanctions to Russia because of this and will blame Russia for the move of the uh, Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic there. Uh, just something we thought we'd share with you, thought that was in interesting. Uh, this is another thing that's really kind of spiraling out of control in America. We see that uh, uh, Sessions, who was uh, appointed as the Attorney General by uh, President Trump, he was passed in that, uh, is now being accused of lying under oath, saying he had no uh, ties or conversations with Russia uh, prior to or during the campaign trail there. Uh, but as he stated in his own um, uh, defense here recently, is that he still was a senator, he still was on the arms uh, committee there, and he did have contacts with Russia in that capacity there, but still claims that he did not have uh, contacts with Russian officials or diplomats regarding the election. And I bring this up because to me it's really just becoming a political football, and it's it, it doesn't make sense. All this major issue with the Democrats over whether or not the Republicans through Donald Trump had any kind of conversations with the Russians during the, uh, the, you know, the election year makes no sense at all. If you're dealing with a new coming administration that is wanting to find peace with Russia, what is the harm in them having conversations in the first place? This is what makes it so absurd to me. And even in the next article here, we have Obama administration rushed to preserve the intelligence of the Russian election hacking. Oh, 
gosh. You know, I really think it's all blown out of uh, uh, proportion to begin with. I do not think that Russia ever had anything to do with the hacking of the government. But did, did Vladimir Putin want to try to establish good relationship if, that, if, if uh, Donald Trump were to win the election? No doubt he did. Would there be any harm in having conversations with possible aides that would be later part of his cabinet, a part of his administration? To me, it is only obvious that that is the smartest thing to do. Why? You've already got a major tension going on with the United States and the Obama administration that's about to spiral into a third world war over in NATO. And, and in fact, what's even more disturbing, uh, as the New York Times brings out here in this article here, is that the Obama, uh, with the Obama here, that now the British and Dutch uh, allies of America have provided information describing meetings in European cities between Russian officials and other close to Russian President Vladimir V. Putin and other associates of President-elect Trump, according to three former American officials requesting anonymity and discussing classified intelligence. It, it, it is bewildering to me to see how that the Europeans have been drug into this mess along with the Obama administration who were really pushing for a, a major uh, military buildup in the eastern part of Europe going against Russia. And now that President Trump is in the office and he's not necessarily willing to go against Russia, um, all this wrangling that's going on, I cannot help but think that what we're about to see is that the Democratic uh, Party is definitely going to try to find an excuse to remove Donald Trump from power. And that seems to be exactly what they're doing with the case with Jeff Sessions, uh, with, his, with other aides that he's had, that he's, other appointees that he's had for his administration. Uh, there is a major push to try to undermine uh, Donald Trump and to make this whole issue of any of his aides uh, that, that may have or may not have contacted Russian officials uh, during the election year uh, is a major crime and that this was what was going on and this was part of the hacking and the compromising of the electoral system of America. I think it's all a bunch of hogwash myself. And I think that it actually, uh, I'm not saying that they did or did not have communications, but if they did, I think it was a smart thing to do. Uh, even if Hillary Clinton were, were, were to have had uh, conversations with Russian officials to try to defuse the situation as an incoming uh, possible president of the United States, I would think that that would be a smart thing on her part. Uh, but unfortunately, on Hillary Clinton's part, she was more about taking down Russia, taking Russia out, whereas uh, Donald Trump was more about trying to, you know, let's, let's have peace with uh, Russia. Let's go after the real enemy, ISIS. Well, you know, of course, the Democratic side didn't want to go after ISIS because they created ISIS in the first place. And that's where all the problem really comes down to. Very disturbing to me, uh, in my opinion there. But then again, uh, this also, as we see in Latvia, the, uh, the Black Hawk helicopters that are arriving in the country there just really concerns me as well. It makes me wonder if President Trump is really in power because there is no let up of the movement of military equipment to the eastern side of Europe on Russia's border there, all in the name of protecting the border. All these things are against the agreements that they signed with Russia. But then again, Russia, tit for tat, puts in nuclear uh, missiles over in Kaliningrad. So it's just constantly, constantly spiraling out of control, in my opinion. Uh, another interesting news, this is coming out on Com News. Mumbai Military Council reaches new agreement with Russia. By the way, the Mumbai, this happens to be those that are defending their city inside of Syria there, northern Syria, close to the Euphrates River and they have agreed to turn over West Mumbai to uh, the uh, Syrian army, the Syrian military there. I find that interesting because this is one of the areas that the Turkish government has been trying to take control of. All of the northern border of Syria they've been trying to take control of uh, and take this away from the Syrian government. But now that Russia has made an agree agreement with uh, this group here in uh, Mumbai, uh, Syria, and allowing the Syrian military to move into there only lets us know that it seems Putin is still more concerned about President Bashar al-Assad. 
Uh, at that being said there, let me just share with you where this is on the map here. You can see here the, the black line here across the top. This here is Turkey, down here is Syria. Mumbai and of course the Euphrates River is right here. Al Bab down here and of course Aleppo, you can't see it there, a little bit further down there to the left on your map. But I might add as well, another interesting thing, and we cannot confirm if this is so or not, but just to kind of share this with you here, um, this particular video here just came out, and this is Humvees, uh, just a small group of Humvees with an American flag on top. Now, according to some, they are saying that this may not actually be Americans there, but this is in Mumbai as well. But if you notice this guy walking right here, he does seem to be very much look like an American soldier, very much dressed like one, got the, the, uh, the armored vest on, etc. Helmets. It's not, we cannot tell conclusively if this is the case or not, but it'd be interesting to know that Americans are actually present there in Mumbai, um, uh, Syria. And of course, they're also showing this in this picture right here as well. Uh, the American flag is the same group of Humvees that had came into town there. There were four of them. Uh, and whether or not this is actually so or, so or not, we cannot say 100% uh, with certainty on that. Uh, but, uh, but an interesting point to begin with. Uh, and also in closing our broadcast here on this last here South Front, uh, U.S. journalists investigating the migrant crime in Sweden has to leave under police escort for his own safety. Talk about problems in Sweden. Uh, this guy right here, uh, his name is Tim Poole. He went into Sweden to be able to film what was going on. He didn't last even a few minutes there before uh, about four men put on hooded masks over their heads and the police came up and said, look, you need to leave. We will escort you out. It is not safe for you to be here. Kind of give you just a little bit of the clip here so you can see what happens here. So he, he and his crew had to leave there. We're not able to get even a single interview of going on. So he saw what was happening there. Uh, this will give you a little idea here. Uh, this happened with another news crew that was there in Sweden. And these guys began to cover themselves up. And, uh, and of course, the, the locals there in Sweden, the, the migrants, I shouldn't say locals, the, the mig uh, refugees that have come into Sweden there began to become extremely violent with this news crew here. Uh, and this was 60 Minutes uh, that was trying to film what was going on in this area here. And uh, it wasn't until one of the locals actually took his scooter and rammed the guy that was attacking them uh, that, got, that got it to where they could actually leave somewhat safely. Uh, so very, very serious situation in Sweden. And as they say, they have no-go zones there, and that is definitely one of them. Uh, this here was uh, President Trump, where President Trump had actually uh, tweeted about it. He says, give, give the public a break. The fake news media is trying to say that uh, large-scale immigration in Sweden is working out just beautifully. And then he puts on there, not with an exclamation point. And he's right. It's, it, for Sweden, it's not. Uh, we do have uh, one of our good friends that lives in Germany, though, is saying that it is not as bad as what the news media is portraying in Germany. Uh, in fact, she's from Berlin. I uh, would like to make one final note as well, a correction from the video that we loaded yesterday from Berlin, Germany, uh, that we had gotten from an Israeli counterpart there, uh, showing the people chanting in the streets, screaming, Jew, Jew, death to the Jews. Now, the video is authentic, but the problem is, is we did not realize that this actually happened in 2014. Nonetheless, it was still chanting, the Jew, Jew, uh, come out and fight, come out and fight. Uh, so it's still a very disturbing uh, issue that happened inside of Berlin, Germany, uh, but it was uh, a few years ago now, uh, now that we're in 2017, uh, but they said the video was actually two years old. I thank you for those of you that let us know that, that we're able to fi figure, these, figure this information out, uh, but we want to make that correction. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.